In this video, we're going to see how we can use a text box input field so we could automatically trigger things like conditional formatting and filters. For example, I've got a text box input field here and a table of information below. If I were to type in something like the word south, I instantly find everything in the region column that has the word south in it. If I type in the word ball, I find everything in the product column that has the word ball. And if I'm more generic and I type in something like AS, I find everything everywhere that just has the letters AS in it. So the more letters I feed it, the fewer entries I end up with. This could also be done for filtering purposes. So if I wanted to find every product that has the word tennis balls in it, I could type in TEN and there's all the tennis balls. But if I were to type in MAC, here's everything with the word machines in it. And the only thing I'm doing is typing. The conditional formatting and the filtering is reacting automatically. The first step in this project is to create the input text box. This feature is available on the developer ribbon. The developer ribbon is not activated by default, so if yours is not visible, go anywhere in the ribbon and right click and choose customize the ribbon. In the right side of this panel, check the box for developer. Click OK. We now have a developer ribbon. We're going to go to the control section and under the insert button, we're going to choose the text box active X control. Now there is a text box version in the older form controls, but that's only for older Excel files. We'll need to use the newer active X version. So we'll give text box a click. This will give us a crosshair and we're just going to draw a box roughly the size and position where we want this to exist. This can always be resized and moved at any time. The moment we added that text box, this put us in what's known as design mode. And you can see the design mode button here in the control section. While in design mode, this gives you the ability to select ActiveX objects. When the design mode is deactivated, clicking the ActiveX objects will put you in it for use, but you can't do any customization here. Now there's one thing we have to do to customize this text box. So I'm gonna go back to design mode, select the text box field, and then go up here to properties. In this properties dialog box, we want to go down to this entry called linked cell. And it's here where we're going to tell it what cell we're going to link to this text box. The purpose of this is to give the text box a place to store its entered information. In our case, we're going to store this information in cell H1. So in the link cell property, I'm going to type in H1. We can close the properties window and deactivate design mode. You can see now when I click in the text box, if I type something in, we can see whatever is typed in the text box is stored in cell H1. It's cell H1 that we're actually going to use in our formulas. For our first example in highlighting, we're going to use conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting is going to use a custom formula. But before we write this formula in the conditional formatting tool, what I like to do is test the formula off to the side of the data just to make sure that my logic is correct. So I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to perform my test over here in this grid. Now, this grid will actually emulate the behavior of the cells located to the left. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean. I'm going to highlight all of these cells. If I were to type in something like equals, and then I'll choose A7 and see if it equals the word Iowa. When I press control enter, we can see there's a whole series of true and falses because almost all of those cells do not equal Iowa. However, there are a few cells that do equal Iowa and those cells are returning true. So the true indicate locations where the formula triggered as true and the falses where they do not. Well, let's write something a little more sophisticated. So let's say we want to do a search. And I want to search for the text that is visible in cell H1. I need to hit F4 to lock that reference because I need it to be H1 for every cell in this array. But I'm looking for the contents of H1 in cell A7. That is going to remain relative because I need that reference to change relative to the direction and distance that this formula is going to be reproduced. I'll press Control Enter, but right now everything is returning a 1 because there's nothing in cell H1 for it to search for. But if I go to my text box input field and I type in something like Iowa, we can see that it found the word Iowa in those locations. Everything else returns an error because it didn't find it. If I replaced Iowa with something like ball, here are all the places where ball was discovered. The number is telling me where a positive response exists. I don't really want to know the location of where that text exists. I just want to know that it exists. I could modify this formula by placing the search results inside of an isNumber function because this will turn any place that is a number into a true and anything else into a false. One minor problem with this formula is that if we don't enter any text into the text box input field, all of the results will hit true. So we need to modify this formula to account for an empty text box. So I'm going to wrap this inside of an AND function, and in order to be true, you have to have found the entry in the text box, and the text box itself, which is storing its data in H1, must not be empty. 
now we can see that if the input box is empty, all of the results will hit false. Now here's an interesting little quirk behavior of Excel. If I were to take this isNumber function out, it works the exact same way. And the reason being is, if I were to type in something like ball, the and treats the search results as a positive behavior. Because search, if it locates the word ball, is returning a number. And any number other than zero, according to an and, is true. Zeros are false, any other number is true. So we were able to simplify the formula a bit. It's this formula that we need to put into our conditional formatting. So I'm gonna go into the formula bar, highlight this and copy it, control C, hit escape. Now we'll highlight all of the data, go up to home, conditional formatting, new rule, and we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format, and it's here where I will control V and paste that formula. Now we just need to apply our formatting. I'm gonna go with a light green fill. So now back to my text box. If I type in the word Iowa, we find all the Iowas. But if I type in the word M-A-C-H for machine, we find everything that has the word machine in it, or West. Typing in something as simple as the letter A shows every cell that has the letter A in it. But the more letters you feed it, the more restricted this gets. Now let's see how we can use the same idea of a text box input control to create an instantaneous filter. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back up to Developer, Insert, ActiveX Controls, and grab our text box control. I'll place my text box here, and as before, we'll go into the properties of the text box, and I'm gonna link this text box to cell H1. So to test it, I'm gonna get out of design mode, go into the text box, and if I type in the word ball, the word ball appears in cell H1. So the formula we're going to write is going to take the input from that text box and use it to filter this data table for the product column. So we'll start with a simple test in the product column that just does a search. And we're gonna search for whatever the user typed in H1, and we're gonna search for that on the data sheet in the product column. So just as before, if the word ball was found in that particular cell, a number is returned for its discovered position within that text. If it's not discovered, an error is returned. Let's turn those numbers and errors into true false responses. So we'll go back to the formula, and we'll nest this search inside of an isNumber function, and now we have true false responses. This is going to be the logic for the filter function. Now because I don't want to type all this again, I'm going to highlight this and control C copy, hit escape, and I'm going to delete that formula. Let's go over to the sales rep column. This is where we're going to write the filter function that will return the entire row from the data table if that product is discovered. So we're going to start with equals filter. What we're trying to filter is on the data sheet and we want to filter this entire table. What we're filtering for is the logic we created with the isNumber search function. We'll give it an extra close parentheses, press enter, and the filter function has now returned every row that has the word ball in the product column. If we change that to tennis, here's tennis balls. If I did a search for the word machine, or part of that word, here's everything that has those letters in it. The rows being returned are in the same order as they came from the source table. But what if we wanted to sort the results list by product and then within each product by their respective sales. We'll go into the filter function and wrap this inside a sort function. So what is being sorted is the result of the filter function, comma, which columns do we wanna filter by? We wanna filter by the product and the sales. The positions of these columns are identified by numbers. So sales rep is one, sales would be eight. So since we want product and sales, product is the third column, sales is the eighth column. We have to provide the sort index argument with a list and lists are contained within curly braces. So we'll go curly brace. My primary sort will be by product, which is the third column, followed by a secondary sort of sales, which is the eighth column. Close curly brace. Now I also wanna sort these in different orders because I want product to be in ascending order, but I want sales to be in descending order. So we'll add a comma. And now the sort order argument, one is for ascending, negative one is for descending. Since we have to tell it which goes where, we have to provide another list. So curly brace and the primary sort, product, is going to get an ascending sort, one, and the secondary sort, which is sales, is gonna get a descending sort, which is negative one. Close curly brace, close parentheses. Let's move this over so we can see the entire formula at once. So we're gonna sort the filtered result, doing a primary and a secondary sort by product and sales in ascending and descending order. Now you can see all of the exercise machines are together in descending order by sales, and all the rowing machines are together in descending order by sales. If we did a search for the word ball, here we have baseballs in descending order, then basketballs in descending order, footballs in descending order, 
golf balls, etc. Now, what happens if the user doesn't search for anything? Well, in this case, the entire table is returned. So we can see we have exercise machines, footballs, basketballs, everything is there. Now on the flip side, what if they search for something that doesn't exist, like Dart? Well, now we get a calculation error. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this formula inside of an if error function to account for that. So let's expand our formula bar so we can see all this. So I'm gonna take this entire sort filter is number search formula and wrap it inside of an if error. And the if error will say, if all of this results in an error, then display the text item not found. Now I've done a little conditional formatting trickery here to color this row red if the words item not found exist. So when you download this file from the link in the video description, you can go up to home, conditional formatting, manage rules, and you can see the rules that I have set up here to perform this coloring. So if they don't type in anything, they get the entire list. If they type in something that's valid, then they'll get an instant filtered list. If they type something that doesn't exist, they'll get an error. So that's how we can use a text box input control to allow instantaneous conditional formatting discovery or instantaneous filters. Couple that with some custom sorting and maybe even a little error checking and we've got quite an interesting little interface. Let me know what you think about this in the comments or if there are any other parts that you think require further explanation. Thank you for taking the time to watch and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.